fatal that color will look good in this night. Um, all right. Sorry, I need to record on this call. All right. Um, okay, so good evening, everyone. Nice to be here again this Thursday. I trust that we are all good. It's as if this Thursday is always move so fast. Um, <laughs> we were here just uh, last Thursday and we are here again. So I trust we are all good. How has been our day, has been the week. The Lord will continue to be faithful to us all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I welcome you to Through It All. We call on nobody. Through It All is all about encouragement. It's all about giving people hope. What we do on Through It All is to uh, make our guests hear their stories with us. And the story is all of their, I mean, it's always a story of what they have been through also. And I've got that our God has really been um, faithful to them. He has been gracious unto them. Uh, the program is just to let somebody going through any challenge in life to know that somebody had, had gone ahead of you, what you're experiencing now, he or she had experienced it and the Lord had taken them over to the other side. And that is a pointer to the fact that whatever you are going through also now, the Lord is going to take you to the other side of it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Surely there is an end to every problem. There is a end to every matter you are going through. And indeed, the expectation of the righteous shall not be dashed. Father, we thank you because you're going to glorify yourself here again today. And lives will be touched, lives will be blessed in Jesus' name. All right. Okay, so we got the name of the program from my book, True It All. True It All is a memoir of my many trials and triumphs in life. I've gone through many challenges in life also, um, that the Lord had been my strength. And um, that's why I do this program, to let you know that some of us had gone ahead of you. So if you need a book, um, you can visit tia.com.ng and um, order for a copy, or you can download the soft copy if that's what you want. And you can also check the book on Flutter Wave Store. Flutter Wave Store, um, search for Color Lubody, and you'll get the book. All right, so um, we're going to the business of today. Um, my guest tonight is a wonderful brother that I've been um, discussing with for almost like two weeks now. And his story is really very challenging, very compelling. It's a story of God taking somebody um, from the dunk eel, so to speak, straight to the throne. That's a story of my dear brother that we're going to that's going to be sharing with us um, tonight. So, with Jesus joy, I want to welcome you, uh, Doctor Christopher um Oloye Day. how are you bro chris i'm fine sir thank you sir so nice to have you here tonight thank you it's nice to meet you sir and thank you for accepting to um, share your um inspiring story with us on Twitter. thank you sir thank okay. you sir for the opportunity too the the pleasure is mine the pleasure is mine all right. Um, so we just go into the um, the program of the day right away. Um, so, bro, Christopher, um, let me release you to give us your story. Of course, I'm going to be interjecting 
in case I want you to add any um, other information or clarify anything. All right. All right, sir. So, um, you've really been through it all. That's been and God. I thank sir. God for your life. Thank God, sir. All right. So, do you want us to? Do you want to take us through your story? And like I always say, just start from Genesis <laughs> and take us all the way to the present revelation that we have right. gotten through. All, all right. right. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir, for the opportunity. Good evening, everybody, everyone on this platform. I welcome you all to another episode of Through It All Tonight. And I thank our daddy, Daddy Kola Olugodi, for this opportunity. And I want to say that what I'm about to share tonight, it is not about me. Thank you, everyone. All right, so, Bro Chris. Yes, sir. So once again, thanks everyone for your patience. I'm very sorry. So as I was saying the other time, that what I'm about to share as God will be helping me is they are just things that God by his grace has done in my life. And to him be the glory. To him be the glory. To him be all the glory. So whatever you will hear tonight, that is what God has done and what he's doing in me. So by name, my name is Christopher Tonji Oloyede. I was born four decades ago into the family of late Pa Alabi Ogunbemiro, and I'm a native of Ogumosho, a man saved by grace. Uh, for better understanding of God's grace at work in my life and for what God has done, and still doing because I'm a work in progress and I have not arrived yet. So God still has places where he's taking me to. So I will need to briefly share with us the circumstances that surrounded my birth so that we can understand what God has really done in my life. As I was, as I said earlier, I was born four decades ago. My father, my mother got hooked to my father after the, after the death of, his, of her first husband. So she moved down from just to Bumosho. And when she met my father, they both agreed to marry each other. So she got married to him or she got hooked to him as a second wife in his house. So she told me that my father told him, told her that she engaged, he engaged in a cooperative business. But while they were living together, it got to a time that because my father used to come home maybe every two, two weeks or at the end at, at weekend. So my mother got to know that my father was a stack farmer and not what he called himself. So because of this, he, she decided to move out, to pack out of his house. So she divorced the man. So when she divorced the man, but before she divorced the man, she already conceived. I don't know the months, but she already conceived. So now that she has divorced the man, she decided not to have anything doing with that man again. So she decided to get rid of the pregnancy. Now, she went to meet a man. Because of the positive role that that man played, I will mention his name. So she told me that she went to meet one man called Baba Yoalade. And that man had cancelled her, that woman. The fetus in your womb, you don't know what that baby will turn to become in life. Why do you want to get rid of? it she explained and the man promised that i will help you so he started giving her medicine to to get rid of the pregnancy but actually he was given a, a another medicine that will make the baby to be stable and to stay healthy so after 
uh, after about maybe a month or two months, she went back to meet the man that, ah, the, the drugs you are giving to me, it did not work. And the man sat her down, say, madam, let me tell you the truth. All the drugs that have been given to you is to make the baby to be okay. It's not to get rich. And all the money that you have been given to me, I've been helping you to keep them. And that day, he handed over all the money to her. And my mother left the place. And from there, she went to an herbalist. And she told the herbalist to help her to get rid of that fetus. So the herbalist promised to assist her. So maybe he made concussion or any other thing. So, but the herbalist told her that by 10 p.m. at night, she should go and be fetching water from a well. So my mother started doing that. At a point, she told me that she started seeing blood. So blood started gushing out. So from there, they rushed out to the hospital. So on getting to the hospital, they discovered that the baby was in stable condition and nothing happened to the baby. So she was not happy. She was not happy. With all what she did to terminate the pregnancy, all were approved about it. So that is how she decided to keep the, the baby. And on the long run, so because of that, on, along that line, she met a man. And that man proposed to her. So that man was a transporter. And she decided to marry the man. But the man has a problem. He was an impotent. And my mother promised him that I will give the baby in my womb. I will give it to you immediately I put to bed. So that man continued taking care of her. She, he continued taking care of her whenever he's coming from travel. He will, he will bring things, food stuff, and all that things. So on the long run, my mother put to bed and she gave birth to me. Because she has promised the man that he will give the baby to him. So the relatives of that man, they are the one who came to do the naming ceremony. And they were Muslim. So I, they are, the, the Muslim people came and did the naming ceremony. I was named Sarah Vadim. And But the good thing that my mother did was that he didn't allow me to go to Islamic school. So we were both living together and many for months, he will not see the man, but the family also, the relative of that man also knew that this man was, is an impotent. Was impotent. So, okay. Yes, so they didn't know, they, they, were, they, even, they were even confused that, ah, how come, how was he able to impregnate this woman? So, but everybody kept muted. So they were continuing like that until when she couldn't see the man again. So in that process, when I was about a year old, another man proposed to her and she married that man too. And because that one was a, was a well-to-do man, was a wealthy man. So the man was known in Obuma Shore in his, in his own area. So she married that man. And before she got married to him, there was an agreement between the two of them that if you want to marry me, you have to marry this boy too. So at a year old, she moved. When I was a year old, she moved finally to that man's house. And that is how she became the third wife in his house. And I was living with them. I couldn't know. I don't know what happened. So as I was growing up, I grew up to add them to know that man as my biological father. Okay. So, but, sir? You grew up to, to know him as your father. Okay. Yes, sir. So, and the man was taking care of me and my mother. But there was, as I was growing up, I discovered something. 
that the man, the man and my wife, my mother, they do fight a lot. So anytime there is a fight between them, she in that man's house, she gave birth to another five children. So she will leave all the five children behind and he will, he will, only, he will to take Oji and to his mother and move to her mother's house. So, but I don't understand why she was doing that. So as I was growing, it when in 1993, when I got admission to secondary school, I, dis I discovered that things were not going as it was between that man and I, but I didn't know. I was, it, it was his name I was bearing from primary school, from no, uh, primary school to secondary school. Then one day, a man came to me. The, I, I just discovered that the man started to hate me. I don't know why. But my mother did not disclose to me that he was not my father. So there was another man in that house because we are living in that, in the, in, with that man and he has about three houses then. So that man also, there was a man living, we are living together. He was a transporter. And that man came to me one day, said, mm, Toji, let me tell you something. Do you know that this man is not your biological father? It has no meaning to me. I said, hey, who is my father? He said, your father and I, we are, we are friends. We used to meet at a motor park in Lagos. Ah. So one day I went to my mother. I said, ah, and Daddy Lagbaja said this thing, this, this, this to me. And that was when my mother couldn't hide it again. And I didn't see it as anything, as I didn't see it as a problem because I was still young. So one day, because he, the man has started maltreating me. So I have to run out of the house. And she start, he, he stopped financing my education. And my mother was not financially okay to do that. So because of that, that was 1993. I managed that to 1994 when I was in JSS2. And because things were difficult, I couldn't pay tuition fee. They don't allow me to sit to, for any exam in the school. Any exam, all the exam that I sat for then, I, I smuggle myself into the class. I will quickly finish. I will be the first to finish the exam. And I will run out of the class before those who will check, those who will call the name of those who have not paid for the, the tuition fee will come. So I remember one day I finished my exam and as I was about, I've already submitted. Immediately I checked out of the class. That man just came in. Say, we are Sola de Jotoji. You have not paid your tuition fee. Then it was a public school, not private school. So, and everybody said that he has finished. And the man said, where is his answer scripts? And the man took my answer scripts and they went away. So, one of my friends immediately finished. He brought the question paper. I wrote another exam outside and we smuggled it in. So, and that is how I stopped going to school. Then I started, that's when somebody now introduced me to a labor work. So in 1994. Sorry, sorry, bro, Chris. Yes, I know, sir. I know you changed your name from Tunji to Chris. Chris, some yes. Some people know you as Tunji. Some people know you as Chris. Yes, right. sir. So, um, because of the way situations, um, the situation was at home, I yes, could sir. not pay your um, school fees again. Yes, sir. So you have to stop school. That means yes, you sir. dropped out, like we normally yes. say. Yes, sir. And then, um, so, um, somebody introduced you to labor work. Yes, sir. What type of labor work um, in particular? All right, there sir. Are labor works and there are labor works. Yes, sir. And the type of labor work is she introduced me to, uh, they are in two ways. One, 
is farming, I will be going to people's farm to uh, to work for them. The only thing I couldn't do that that I couldn't do then was I don't know how to make ridges, but oh. I can weed, I can cut grasses, and I was being paid fifteen naira a day. Wow. So then from then, another person now came and said, ah. This one you are doing in that's I started in a Greek settlement in Oboma Show here. So and another person came that this thing you are doing, I've had another thing. There is another labor work in Oduoba. They call it Alabaru. That what you will be doing is that you will be helping people to dispose their waste. You will be helping people to carry their goods. So like uh, tomatoes mangoes pepper and then you can also you'll be helping you can also rent a wheelbarrow so you'll be pushing it so that you can uh, have money to feed yourself so that is how i i moved from a greek settlement to odoba so in odoba i i engage in helping people to dispose their waste like and uh, they will after they have swept their Grand in the morning, they will be loading it. The rotten mango, the rotten tomatoes, even the the uh, baby feces and all that thing. They will pack everything together in a basket. So I will be the one to carry it on my head. So the only vehicle uh, that I have them uh, is was my leg and my head. So I will carry it, it on my head. I will carry it to the dump site. So that is how I continue. Sometimes I will rent a wheelbarrow. So I will be pulling a wheelbarrow in the uh, Oduaba market. So many times, there, I remember a day I carried a, a big basket of waste on my head going to a dump site. And along the way, I discovered that I couldn't carry it again because it was heavy. You remember uh, how old I was, just 13 years of age. Wow. So, and I said to myself, another problem is that nobody will assist you to bring that load down because of the odor. So I thank God that I met somebody and the person assisted me. I put it on the ground and I said, God, if you can take away this load from me, I will buy a fake for the church. Even though I was not born again, I was, I was only church goer. So after I've rested for a while, another person assisted me to put it on my head again. And I dumped it at the dump site. Now, so I continue like this. Each time I'm going to do a market, early in the morning by 7 a.m., between 6.30 and 7 a.m., my mate will be going to school. And I, I, the, the motor park then, it was, um, we call it Waskas Finish Station and Tesaco Finish Station. And the type of vehicle that, we, that used to carry us to Oduaba, we call it Tan Lese. Who owns this leg? Because they will, put, they will put some plank at the base, they will put one at the top. So some of us will sit at the top, some will sit at the bottom. So those ones at the bottom will be asking, those ones at the top, where by the time the leg is touching them, that who was this leg go? So that is how we they are calling it tan lesson. So I will I will hide myself I, from my mate. Immediately they are passed, I will quickly enter that uh, uh, e logs. So and move me to Odoba. So when somebody has now observed that ah, this Odoba work that you are doing will not help your future. Okay, we have my parents, they are living in a village. So that is how they introduced me into, a, to, into villages. And I started from Alagba village. So that's between age 13 and 14. So on getting to Alagba village, I continue doing the labor work. They will take me to farm. I don't know how to farm. I've never done it in my life. They bought due to situation i have to learn it by force so i was doing it with people they'll be giving me money 
continue doing it. They'll be giving me money. So I stayed in Alagba for months. So the people, the family I was living to, they were good to me. I remember one day there was a dispute between that family and another family. And I said, I know I have to support those family that I was living it because they were the one giving me food. They were the one giving me a shelter. And immediately I joined that, the family, in order to wage war against the other family. And that one said, eh, 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 you. I said, come and want this, your slave boy. Oh. What concern you? Ah, So that was, that is how it was done on me that, oh, so in this house, I was a slave. I'm not part of this family. But there's nothing I couldn't I could do. So I was living there, I was staying there. So after some months, I left that Alagda because the children of those parents, they have started making jealous of me that their parents love me than them. So I have to leave that place. And another and a friend of mine in secondary school whose mother happened to be a friend to my mother, introduced me to their own village. So I moved from Alaga to Oguro Nida. So in that Oguro Nida, I started going there to, to labor, to do the farming, active, different farming activities, except making ridges because I was young. So nobody would give me the work to do. So while I was in Oguro Nida, uh, I would be doing all the work. I will be the one, whenever there is a market day, sometimes I will be the one to follow the vehicle to the market because the vehicle used to come suddenly to that village. So I will be the one to follow the vehicle to the market. So on getting to the market, after we have sold all the goods, I will trek from Oduoba market to that Ugurunida as a teenager of age 13 and 14, between age 13 and 14. So I will pass through forest i will be afraid as i will, as i was going but there's nothing i could do i have to do it but <laughs> i didn't know that one of the villages i will pass by is where my father is it's our village and my father was in that village but because i didn't know him so i would just pass by so and i continue in Oburonida for many months doing the work while my siblings were going to school and I've lost completely the hope that I could, could be educated in life. So after some time, I don't know what happened in Noguroni that maybe there was disputes again and I left, I stopped going to that place. And that is how another woman in our environment introduced me to another village called Okeitu. So in OK2, I only spent, I, I spent less than a week because that environment was not comfortable at all. When we wake, anytime we wake up in the morning, I will wait for them so that we could uh, go to the farm together. So I don't know that they were just enduring that thing. One day they said, you this boy, why are you waiting for us? Your job here is to do the, is you are a laborer. You are not part of us. So you have to go to the work, to the farm. Early in the morning, we have to come and give you food there. So that is how I started doing that. But I couldn't feel comfortable. So I spent less than a week and I came back to Bumasho. And nobody said, you this boy, go and learn a trade. Go and, what do you want to learn? Nobody advised me that, uh, to do that. But all what they would do is to introduce me to village and another person they still introduce me to another village called Alapa. Ah, so in Alapa, that is where I spent more, I stay long in Alapa. So I stay in Alapa till uh, December 1996. The family I was living with, they loved me, even though I was a laborer, but they, they, they showed love to me. They and do me as their own biological children. I, I said, I so 
one day i after in december 1996 i moved down to Bumosho. we only came for a uh, christmas period end of the year uh, pro, uh, program so and my i didn't know that another plan has been on ground that they are planning to take me to one of the villages in Ife so that I will, I will perpetually live in, in that village working and they will be sending my wages, they will be sending it home. And my, one of my mother's friends had that and the woman called me, which work do you like to learn? I said, ah, hey, I would like to learn, I like furniture work. The carpentry work said okay, and the woman took me to her own child who happened to be a furniture maker. That is how I started learning carpentry, furniture, and upholstery work in January 7, 1997. So I continued doing this. I cont I also continued doing my uh, laborer work, the, the farming activities, and all all those things in order to get something to eat. So, but that woman really tried for me. She will give me food in the morning. She will give me food in the afternoon. I will only come home at night to eat I, in my mother's house. So I continue learning. By March 1997, God saved my life. I got converted. So at that point, when I got converted, I, I was happy. I got converted, I got converted. But you, at that you point, I share, you want to share that conversion? Story yes. With us All very right. Briefly. All right, sir. I, I was just in the house where we are living. There, in my, the church I'm still attending our gospel faith mission. So one the pastor came to our house. And when he came to our he came to our house, so I just came in. And one woman said, Hey, look at this boy. He's one of them. Ah, and the pastor preached to me. He led me to Christ. I gave my life to Christ. He invited me to Bible study. All right. We we'll still hold on for. Rock it was Monday. He invited me to Bible study on Tuesday. How I started going to church. I already settled my mind that I know that I'm really God. One of my prayer points uh, was that, Lord, I know that uh, as far as education is concerned, my own is zero. But please give me a sister that is educated to marry. And uh, not knowing that I was deceiving myself. Yeah. And that's another story. That's a story for another. I so I do pray this is one is one is one of you don't want to in your lorry for us. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, if God permits me, I will do that. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. All right, sir. Go there. All right, sir. So, go, so go. I I that is one of my favorite prayer prayer points then. So as I continue, I continue with that. Anytime they are, I have no money, sometimes somebody introduced me to a work in Lautech. So I do go to Lautech farm to do this labor work. We'll be plucking and, and there is a particular plant that they used to feed the, the cattle. So I will go there, we pluck it for them. I think we have been paid 150 naira per day then. So each time I'm going to Lautech, I will sit, I will sit by in, in Lautech Shotu, they call it Babaji, and I will deliberately sit by the window side so that people can see me. So each time I'm going, anybody that uh, those who saw me then say, Hey, has this boy gained admission to Lautech? Ah, I was deceiving myself, I was not deceiving them. So each time we finish work, we are coming back from Lautech, I will, I will sit by the window side. Uh, and uh, those who are staying by in, in, in my workshop area, I will deliberate, I will make sure that they <laughs> call me. And they will ask me, uh, hey, hey, Alagba, have you been given admission to Lautech? Say, uh, don't worry, don't worry. I will not <laughs> like to say that because 
I was already a child of God. So by 1999, I don't know how it happened. There was this zeal in me that you too can go to school. Because I remember that there was a day our pastor then, uh, Pastor Sakios Aru Oyeli, she called for a program, student program. And one of the, in the house where I was living, we have government member there. And one of the sisters, uh, Sister Tony Akonbi, she told me that, ah, Tony, won't you go to, won't you attend the uh, student program? Said, ah, student program. Said, ah, you know that I don't know how to speak grammar. And I can, I can only understand to some point. And the sister said, don't worry. And you, you two will go to school. So that is how she encouraged me to attend the program. So I attended the program. So in that program, it got to a time. And Pastor Sakyo said, uh -huh, now, every one of you, you will be telling me what you want to become in the future. Ah, where I sat down, said, hey, Number one, I don't know how to speak, how to communicate in English language. That's number one. Number two, without exaggeration, I don't know what I want to become. I was just learning, um, I have just started learning uh, carpentry work. So where I sat down, I was thinking within myself, hey, what could I, what could I do now? So I disguised as if I want to pee. So I sneak out of the church and I went to the back of the church auditorium. So after he has, everybody have said, and this one we said, I want to become a medical doctor. I want to become that. So I stayed at the back of the auditorium for some time. So when I discovered that he did not ask anybody again and he, he has started doing another thing. So I came, I now came back inside the church. So he couldn't ask me again. Because if he eventually asked me, Maybe I would have copied one of their grammar. Yeah. And the only thing I would have said uh, uh, is, I want to become a furniture. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> that one would have been another problem. <laughs> so that is how I, that one gone like that. So I started, I went this zeal, when there was this zeal in me to go back to school. So I told my master, I want to go back to school. So then he released me. So I, I went back to my labor work to have, so as to get money to pay because we are being paid. We pay tuition fee in public school then. So I, I, that time, that, at that time, it was no longer farming. It was bricklayer work I, I was doing and they were paying me 100 naira per day. So I got that money and given it to somebody to to keep it for me so by september that that i should go to school i went to meet the person he didn't give me she didn't give me the money again so she has spent the money ah uh -huh. nothing i could do so but god so good that was when lamadishna came became the governor of your state and he declared free education so that is how i had the opportunity of going back to school so i started school in 1999 it was that 1999 I supposed to finish my secondary school. So the very day I was going to back to school, that was the very day my mate uh, sat for their last paper in YEC. Then and the ne NECO exam has not started. And they were drumming and dancing, coming back from exam hall. I was just looking at them. So, but that was when I started JSS theory. Hmm. So, but when i couldn't hope christ gave me hope i believe within myself that i will also make it so i continue that way and <laughs> the lord is your strength my brother the lord is your strength like you rightly said when you could not cope, Christ gave you hope. And he did not just give you hope. He has turned your morning into dancing. You understand? I want to imagine that some of your classmates, 
that you saw drumming and dancing the day you were going back to school. Some of them didn't end up in the university. Some of them also will be wishing. You understand? So yes, sir. Um, in all things, we give praise to God. No matter how God does it, is the potter, we are the clay. Can the clay say to the potter, why are you molding me this way? Mm -hmm. We may not know why he's molding us the way he's molding us. But when the father finishes it and he displays us the way we display us, that is when we become wonders unto many. Mm -hmm. And people will look at us and say, Talk. like Robas, we say, any time we could leave Pago over then to call the alert in me. The person that we never thought can even put, um, just like we call it in Lagos, board off, just put mm. glass, I mean, put uh, wood to wood and just stay there. Had not, has not built a castle. That's your story. Uh, all right. Um, um, he has turned your money into dancing. I know when you get to this point, you will always still cry. There is cry of joy because you know where you used to be. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Are you still with me, bro? Bro, Christopher. All right. Um, I hope this is not hanging again. All right. We're going to wait for the network to come back. But I hope somebody is here following us tonight. Is the Lord God Almighty that gives us beauty for ashes. All right. You're back. All right. Um, all right. Let me add you back. All right. All right. He gives us beauty for ashes. Um, the oil of joy for garment of praise. I mean, um, I've missed it up. But it gives us beauty for ashes. I can remember that. All right. Um, are you okay now? Do you want to continue? Or should we yes, stop? Sir. Yes, I, I, I wish to continue, sir. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right, sir. So by that 1989, I started my secondary school education again, and I continued like that. And since then, I determined that, no, I will become somebody in life. Hallelujah. So because I have that strong faith within me. In our house, uh, one early in the morning, I was studying my book. And one brother looked at me and said, are you this boy? Why can't you face the work you are, your carpentry work? Who will sponsor your education? I, I couldn't answer him. But within me, I said, God will do. So... With that, I continue. So until 2001, in 2001, and 2002 to be precise, the man sent me out of the house. That's my stepfather. He, he sent me out of the house because the trouble was too much. So I have to pack out of the house. And I moved to my friend's house, uh, Dr. Guntoye. So... Then they transfer a pastor to our assembly, and Pastor Titus Akinleye. And when that pastor saw my predicament, so he decided to adopt me. So the pastor adopted me, and I moved from Dr. Oguntoye's house, then Brother Oguntoye Jonathan, so to his house. So I was living with the pastor, and that the pastor adopted me in order to use me as an experiment. What do I mean by this? Because of the stipend that they were being paid, pastor did not, he was, he, he didn't believe, he couldn't believe that he was in doubt whether he will be able to send his children to school. And he said, let me adopt this boy and use him as an experiment. Mm. If God, through me, was able to send this boy up to university level, that is an indication that all my children, too, 
will be educated. Hallelujah. So we were living together. He was responsible for my feeding, responsible for many things in my secondary school education. When I wanted to sit for the SSCE, we don't have money. The pastor did not have money. I don't have money. But God so good, I won a scholarship then. So I emerged as the best student in Obomo Show South. So and, and I was given an award, and that award was in cash. So it was that money that we used to register for my Wahek. And another teacher in my school said, I do this boy. Do you want to sit for GC? I said, yes. She paid for my uh, GC too. I only had that little. So from then, I sat for the Wahek. I couldn't make all my paper. So, but in 2004, I sat for it again and I was able to make all my papers except the English language and a particular uh, subject. So, and in that 2004, uh, I sat for JAMP also. And uh, Lautech was doing pre degree. So, I said to one of my pastors, I said, I want to obtain the degree form. By that time, I finished my secondary school education now. So I was working with a uh, brother, Akin Odeshola. So I was working as a shop attendant, helping him to sell cassettes and uh, gospel cassettes to people. So I told my brother, Akin Odeshola, then that, Daddy, I want to go to university. He said, yes, Toji, I know if you sit for the exam, you will pass. I know, I know. I can see your, you are very hardworking. So he encouraged me. Then I told one of my pastors. That pastor said, hey, I know if you sit for this exam, you will pass. But who will sponsor your education? I couldn't answer him. But within me, I said, God will. God will. So, and I continued this way. I sat for a pre-degree. And I was given the admission, but I don't have money to pay. So pastor also didn't have money to pay, which we all struggle. My, the, my, the pastor struggled to get money. I also struggled to get money. We didn't know we, we didn't, we were, or we, were, we were unable to get to see somebody to give us money. Then at that time, God brought a brother to our church. He started attending our church. So that was a um, brother... Paul Lacambi, now Professor Paul Lacambi. So, and that brother was doing his master degree in univ the University of Illinois. So, he wanted to pay for his tuition fee. And he said, hey, I, I, Christopher and Fuji, how far, brother, how far about your uh, tuition fee? Have you seen some, have you, has anybody borrowed you the money? I said, no. And the brother said, mm, do not worry. I want to pay my tuition fee, but I will suspend mine. I will give that money to you. So that is how he gave me the money, 35,000 Naira or 30,000 Naira. Then he gave me the money and I was looking for 45,000 Naira. Another person gave me 5,000 Naira that same night. So when I got home, pastor was able to raise 5,000 Naira. I don't know how he got the money. So, and I paid for my tuition fee. With that, they couldn't allow me even to enter into the, into the lecture hall because you have to pay for your registration fee. I think maybe 9,800. So I was still living, sleeping at home. So one night I was praying. After the prayer, Holy Spirit ministered to me, said, begin to thank God that you will pay for your registration fee today. I couldn't believe. So I slept. Im immediately I lie down to sleep. I lost my peace. I lost my joy of uh, salvation. And I said, Lord, but I didn't commit anything. So and then I remember that I doubted the word of God. I said, Lord, forgive me. Thank you, Father, because to this morning, I will pay for my registration fee. I only said it. I couldn't believe. So I slept to about 9 a.m. So by 9 a.m., I slept in my friend's house, uh, brother Jonathan. So by... The morning by 9 a.m. I moved, I went to meet Pastor, and immediately I got to our house. Pastor said, Hey, bro, Tunji, how far? How much is that your registration fee? I said, Ah, it's 9,800. How much have you, how much do you have? 
I don't have money, but I could click and calculate it in my head that if I get to Sunday school office, because I was the Sunday school and general secretary, and I'm the one keeping the money, that maybe I should be able to get 2,000 Naira. So and all got so good, I got 2,000 Naira. Then she, he gave me the balance and I paid my, for my tuition fee that, and that very morning. That is how I started and I continue like that. I continue like that. He has been, he, he, he has been God through that pastor. So many times we not have money to pay for my tuition fee. He will just call brethren in the church. He will talk to them. So, and some of them will gather the money. That was the day. He called uh, some of them. And some people responded negatively that, why do we have to pay for this boy tuition fee when uh, his mother is there? And he couldn't call those ones again. So, but he started calling three, three people. I don't want to mention their name. So those ones, they continue, they continue like that. When our tuition fee was 2005 in Lautech, I, I find it difficult to pay. In fact, in my hundred level, I went to Ibadan for a labor work. It was my friend, uh, Dr. Oguntoi, that was helping me to do my registration and was using his own money for my, to pay for my own registration. So by the time I returned, I couldn't give him all the money, even till now. The friendship, the friendship and in lordship, if there is any grammar like that, I've said to that one. <laughs> so and I continue like that. So by 300 level, they raised our tuition fee from 6,005 to 40,000. Here was a boy who find it difficult to pay 6,005. But within me, I have that faith that God will do it. So do you know that I find it easy, easier to pay 40,000 Naira than 6,005. So God just raised people. They gave me money through pastor, some in the church. There, there is a sister in our church, uh, Sister Oyekemi. She will give me money and all that, the food and all those things. So that is how I continue until I finish my secondary school education through this pastor. And while I was going to school, when things were even difficult, I went to I went to a place called Ikosi, the and they gave me land. I went into farming together with a sister. I planted yam, we planted cassava. So we have pasted those things. We have food at home. So instead of we using the money that we have at home. When we are saying we, I'm talking, I'm referring to that pastor, Pastor Titus Akinleye. The money that is supposed to use to buy food at home. Now that I've brought a uh, cassava produce, and we use it to make gari, we use it to make food. So he just diverted those money into my education. So, and from there, I continue through God in him. So when I finished my secondary school education, then he said, yes. If God could sponsor Broughton, if God can sponsor Broughton this education and he finished and he today is a graduate, this is an education I have faith today that all my children too will go to school. And I want to tell you today, my pastor has five boys. The first one has finished his university education. He was about rounding up his master degree. That was when he secured scholarship in the school in the United States of America. He's now in the United States of America on scholarship. So the second child also he has finished his uh, degree. The, uh, the third child also about to finish. The second to the last one is in the, uni is in the University of Illinois. And that boy was is complete. Is completely on different scholarship. Yeah. He was, he won the Ohio State, he was the best student in biology in Ohio State and the second best student in biology throughout Nigeria. He took picture with the, our former governor, late uh, Ajimobi. So he's on scholarship from uh, NNPC. They were giving him huge amount of money. It was the money that they were giving him through his own uh, scholarship that is simply his brothers that were, we are also using that money to finance their own education. 
not only me, another brother also lived with Pastor Akinle, he called him Yanu. He also has finished his own university education today. His own case was also, it was similar, it's also similar to mine. So he also, also finished his education now. So all these boys, we only have two and three of them in the university. That one that I was talking about that, he, that is on scholarship. He has finished, if not for the actual strike, he would have finished completely and immediately he finished now. The, they will still the, the University of learning is giving him money every section. They will pay his tuition fee, everything is on full scholarship from University of learning from NNPC, and that one they are giving him a huge amount of money. If he finishes now, there is another package on grant that they will give him. This is a man, Pastor Titus Akinle, that he has infested in the life of Toji Christopher to become somebody in life. And so it was not a surprise if God is doing that for him today. And with that, even to, I immediately I finished my uh, first degree. I finished serving in 2012 June. By July 2012, I secured admission for master degree in Lautech. So I started my master degree. I finished in 2015, December 2015. So when I finished in December 2015, because of the situation of our country, I immediately I put in for my PhD degree, PhD degree. And because Lautech has crisis for about two years, we couldn't, I, we, I couldn't secure the admission. And because I finished my master degree by God's grace with distinction. So uh, when I couldn't, the, well, I was able to, I forfeit the admission then. And I, because I there was no work, I was working in a private school and I decided that I don't have work. Why should I continue with the PhD? So when Pastor Akinle had that one, he said, hey, never, you will, you will be, you have to go and obtain form. Say, I don't have money. He sent money to me to obtain the form. So I, I obtained another PhD form. So when I obtained that form, I obtained that form in 2019. So, and by God's grace, um, by April 2022, I finished my PhD degree. There are many other things that I couldn't remember to share which God has done. But all these things that I've gone through, they are, I am what I am today by God's grace. I am what I am today by God's mercy. I am what I am today because God lives. Because when I was praying that, Lord, give me a, a woman that is educated to marry. I remember that at a time, uh, at a time, at a time, there were certain things that... Uh, <laughs> I certain things came to my way that I knew, and he got he made me to know that oh, if God has not helped me, even for the fact that I've, I was in the university and they know that this boy has future, they do they were even advising and counseling some people that I ah, don't marry this boy, oh, this boy, oh, and while I, while I was living with brother Jonathan, I want to chip in this thing. To know that God knows our future. Brother Jonathan has a sister. And, you know, I was feeding on their, I was, the, the parents is living, they were living in Cardinal. They, they are still living in Cardinal now. And all we, from the uh, small, small thing they are, they are sending to them, the food, the money. So now somebody has been added to the family. So maybe the food that's supposed to last for a month now, you know, there will be reduction in the number of times. So and that sister one day said, ah, this brother is this brother is consuming our food. Mm -hmm. So she has to collide it with one woman in the house. And they they started, she started behaving somehow, somehow to me. And ah, one day my friend went to meet Pastor, maybe to seek for counsel on that case. And Pastor said, Now, Pastor uh, called me, but he did not say it to me directly. He said, ah. You are living in another person's house. I ask you to come and be staying with me. This is house. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? I, but to cut the long story short, 
that sister today is my wife. <laughs> my God. So, so she's eating in your house now. <laughs> yes, she's now eating in my house I now. The food is getting enough now. <laughs> ah, yes. Yes, so. <laughs> God, God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. That is the title of that. And game. to to round it up, sir. Sorry, sir. To round it up, I discovered that God has different bus stops. God has arranged different bus stops mm. where a man will reach. When you are true at that bus stop, you will come out from the bus. You will enter another bus. So mm-hmm. I've entered different bus stops. And one of it is from with that of Pastor Akinleye. Pastor Akinleye, I went through hell in time of discipline. It didn't, it didn't pamper me. It didn't pamper bad habits in me. I have character that are not worthy of living with. Each time there was a time that he got. I we are tired and he, he has decided to send me out of his house. But the, his wife said, no, don't send this boy out. You don't know what he will become in the future. Until one day, God came to my rescue. And God, him, God himself, op- he opened my eyes to see my waywardness. I was not indulging in sin, no, but in terms of human relationship, I was very poor. So, and, and I went to pastor, I said, pastor, hey, God, I, God said this, 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 this to me. And pastor said, hmm, thank God. It could only be God because I've decided to send you out of the house. You know that from that day, I have a change of attitude. So when pastor was transferred from Obumosho to another place, thank God for pastor, Sakios Aruwo Yeli, he, he was the one doing all those things, even before then giving me clothes and all those things. So, but God discovered that there is another bus stop he has to take me to. Somebody that will be able to continue doing the work that Pastor Akinleye left behind. And he introduced me to Pastor Gumo Dedi. That was in 2008. But... Each time I was passing through the library, I will see Pastor Gumode Day standing before me in the front of the li- library. And Holy Spirit will say, look at that man, go and meet him. And I will look at him because I've started attending peace house. Then I will say within me, say, Baba, I see the genetic too serious in the peace house, sir. Why should I go and meet him? I will say that it happens not once, I know it happens more than once. It happens more than two. So it will happen more than twice. Then, in two, after I got married in 2015, and my friend, uh, uh, Dr. Guntoye said, ah, there is a class, discipleship class in Unity Baptist Church that he has started going to that place that he encouraged me also that we should be, at, that I should attend that together with my wife. On getting to that class, and I discovered that it was Pastor Gmodedi. I said within my heart, this man again. Yeah, yeah. So when our class, when we uh, uh, when we about to round up the concept, and uh, we are in disciple disciple relationship, that was when I now opened up to him. Because before then, it was Pastor Sakios that has been playing that role. But Pastor Sakios has become my father. If if I, uh, if there is anything, if I misbehave, Pastor Sakios may say, Christopher and uh, Konji, well, I will not talk to you again because he has already become his father to me. But here is Pastor Moredi, he will not pamper nonsense in me. There is no uh, license for nonsense in his dictionary. And I'm really enjoying that. It was that Okuta Tomale Mikosile, Tigbanye. It has now become the chief corner stone. Chief and if not for God, through him, I wouldn't have been able to meet Brokola and Daddy Kola Lugodi tonight. <laughs> so I thank God for that. God has used different people for me in my way to greatness. Wow. And I'm, I'm not yet arrived. I'm a work in progress. And I know that God is taking me to somewhere. Thank you, sir. Wow, wow, wow. 
your your story is a very 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 inspiring one um bro christopher thank you so much for sharing this story your story the story of your life with us you know some of the the points i just brought out and i just say your your destiny is in your hands you know you took your destiny in your hands you desired to go to school you understand yes sir the bible says god will grant to us the desires of our hearts you knew what you wanted and you stood by it and god gave it to you even when you were showing your face out of the window of those buses <laughs> You were, you were actually, um, I, will, I will say, in a funny way, you are adding work to your faith. Mm. That now they are mm. seeing me as a student. Is he a student? Is he a student? Eventually, mm. you became a student in Lao Tech. And now you are not just a student. You are a teacher of the students there. Thank you. Thank God. Our God is a faithful God. Our yes. God is a wholesome God. You know? And um, of course, I wrote, I say, uh, do your beginning be small, your end shall be exceedingly great. The beginning of our brother was so humble, was so rough, but indeed, now God has turned his end to be exceedingly great. You know, the scripture I was trying to quote that was scattering the other time. Isaiah chapter 61, um, from verse 3 says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. So I don't know what somebody here is going through tonight. You are mourning, you are sighing, you are in pain, you are distressed, you are depressed. God has not forgotten you. The Lord is going to come for you. The way he came for uh, Bro Christopher, that he went from Alag Baru to clearing people's farm, and now God has made him builders of men. Builders of men. God is going to turn your morning into dancing also. Amen. He's going to, change, he's going to give you beauty for us. He said, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So shall the Lord do for somebody here that is also in pain in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, Amen. another beautiful thing that God did for you, bro, uh, Christopher, it was when you got born again that God surrounded you with fathers with brothers wonderful brothers like brother jonathan like uh that the titles uh, are killer here and if you were not in the lord and the uh, pastor sakios if you were not in the lord i don't know what would have become of you mm. you understand yes that's sir. the beauty of being a child of the living god the bible says if your father and your mother if they go to the extent and it happens that they forsake you, God says, I, I will bear you up. God actually bore you, he, he, he brought you up in his own hands. Oh. He sent help to you. And he will keep doing so in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You know? So please, Amen. if you're listening or you're still going to listen to this video later, there is the joy that you really experience when you are in Christ Jesus. That is what happens to my brother. All right, so bro, uh, bro Chris. Yes, sir. The carpentry thing, you just abandoned it just like that. No, sir. Today, by God's grace, it's one of the, it has become a source of blessing to me. And by God's grace, it has, it, my carpentry furniture work uh, has become. Wow, the internet.
All right. Um, at least I know that registered company. By God's grace, I'm still doing this. All right, we lost today. you. Maybe you want to take grace. it again. The internet went. All right, off. sir. I so you were talking okay, about sir. the carpentry uh, business. Yes, sir. I said the carpentry business. I am still doing it today. The carpentry, the furniture, the journey, the upholstery, everything, anything would work. I'm still doing it today. And by God's grace, uh, it, it, it has become a registered company I by God's you. grace. And I know that God is taking it higher. Because that's one of the vision God gave to me. Uh, when I when I was uh, employed in Lautech, and I was thinking of quitting. So one day God said, no, not, I have a plan for it. So, and today I'm doing, it's, it's one of the things that God is using to bless our home and to bless lives. You, you know, um, the, Bible, the Bible talks about God giving you double. Mm. You know, that same Isaiah chapter 61, verse 7 says, for your shame, you shall have double. And for your confusion, Amen. you shall rejoice in their portion. Amen. So for the shame you've suffered growing up, now the Lord had given you double. You will have your lecturing job, and then you will have your own business by the side. Yes, and sir. And we continue to bless you. Uh, Amen. Just one more word before I release you, uh, my brother. Uh, there are some people presently going through the hardship that you had gone through. I just want you to encourage them in just one minute. Thank you, sir. I, will, I want to say this to those who are passing through one hardship or the other. I will quote from the book, A Purpose-Driven Life Living by written by Rick Warren. In chapter two of the book, I, uh, topic, not, you are not an, an accident. In, he said, if there was no God, we would all be accidents. But there is a God who made you for a reason. And your life has profound meaning. We discover that meaning and purpose only when we make God the reference point of our lives. If you have made God the reference point of your life, I want to encourage you that God can do more than what he has done in my life and what he will still do. Said you are what you look like. You are who you have for a reason. And you are part of an intricate plan. You are a precious and perfect, unique design. So call God special person. So don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Continue trusting in God. And for those who have, maybe you have people that are living with you. They are not your biological children. Maybe as disciples. And their character is not, is not, is, is not what home, right home to, about. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you that you should not be weary. You should continue doing it. If God can change uh, Tonji Christopher. I believe that God who, who is God who has worked and who is still working on me will also work on their life. And you will see them uh, going higher, going to higher places in life. And you also will be rejoiced. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so, so much. God gives the meaning to your life. He made you, He created you. He says, I alone knows the thought I think towards you. He knows the plan he has for you. When you come back to him and you surrender your life to God, he begins to make your life play out the mm -hmm. way he had planned it before he sent you into this world. So if you don't know Jesus, please, we are not talking church. We are not talking religion. We are talking a relationship with your savior. All right, so please give your life to him today. If you don't know how to do so, please reach out to me. My number is 08026 
083-0802614-3683. Reach out to me. I will gladly lead you to Christ and even stay with you and show you the way to grow as a child of God. Is that okay? And uh, if you're going through any distress, if you're going through any trouble, if you feel like uh, you've gotten to the tail end and you don't know what to do else, I mean, what else to do, sorry, uh, freely get in touch with me. We're going to talk together. The Lord is going to make his purpose for your life to run. You've not gotten to the end. It's just about to start. Just believe in the Lord. All right. So once again, I want to thank you, um, Dr. Oyetunji Christopher um, Oloyede. Thank you for really coming. Thank God that we thank were you, able sir. to eventually have this. Even though thank we you, have sir. to go this extra mile. Sorry, everyone, that we went this far. But we thank God um, for how he had made the program to go. So the Lord is going to keep taking you higher and higher. Amen. He took you through what he took you through for a purpose. Amen. You understand? And um, your, one of your responsibilities now is to keep comforting those that are presently going through the things you've been through in the past and letting them know that it has not ended. All right. So um, we're handing through it all for today um, on this note. Uh, Three it all happens every Thursday, eight o'clock. I'm bringing somebody else to us next week, um, Thursday. That will be sharing um, our own True It All story with us. Remember, if you are interested in the book True It All, you can get it on Amazon if you're outside the country. And um, in the country, just go to tia.com.ng. CIA is through it all.com.ng and you can always order your own. All right. So I appreciate every one of you for your patience today. And um, let's make it another date on through it all next week, Thursday, 8 p.m. Thank you and God bless you. Bro, Chris, God bless you. My regards to my dear sister. All right. Thank um, you, I'm sir. I also. Okay. I appreciate my my supervisor. It's on okay. the program from beginning to the end. Okay. That is in person of uh, Professor Esu So, okay. so thank you. Sir. All right. So Professor Jekanifa, I appreciate you. Thank you um, for being with us. He joined us right from the onset. Thank you for being here up to now, sir. God bless you. And for Pastor Ogumode, um, I've actually brought uh, 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 Dr. Ogumode on the program also. His story also is a very, very powerful one. He was a organizer and um, now he's about to become a professor. What God cannot do does not exist. Does not exist. All right. Thank you so much, everyone.